Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial on shaping the Earth's atmosphere. In this tutorial we're going to look at air masses and fronts. Remember guys you can get more videos on our website and more information, powerpoints, notes and uh, some more video tutorials on examvision.ie. Please, please, please can you subscribe to our YouTube channel and can you follow us on Twitter and Instagram. You'll find us at examvision for you. Okay, so we're going to look at air masses and fronts. But the first thing we're going to look at is air masses. So, what is an air mass? Well, an air mass is a large body of air that has the same or very similar temperature, pressure, and humidity levels throughout. So, we will say similar temperature, pressure. and humidity levels. So it's an area that has, a, that has similar temperature, pressure and humidity levels throughout. So as you can see in this world map here you can see all the different types of air masses okay. So like we said an air mass is a large body of uh, air that has similar temperature, pressure and humidity levels. So Air masses can be defined according to the region of origin and the course they travel. So masses that originate over land will be known as sea, because sea for continental. Air masses that originate over oceans will be known as M at the front. So M will stand for maritime. And if they travel over polar regions, then you will add a P onto it. If they travel over tropical regions, you will give them a T. And if they travel over Arctic regions, you will give them an A. Go up here. So you might be wondering what do these actually stand for? Well, they stand for exactly what I told you, okay? So CP would be continental polar. If you're looking at a CT, that would be continental tropical. If you're looking at MT, like over here, that would be maritime tropical. If you're looking at CA, be continental Arctic. And if it's MP, it means maritime polar. Okay, so I've put in the difference, uh, what the letters stand for, and the type of weather that it brings, okay? So if you'd like to take them down, please feel free to, to jot them down into your notes. The next thing we're going to look at is fronts. So, what are fronts? Well, a front is when one air mass meets another air mass, and the boundary between the two of them is called a front. So it's when one air mass meets another air mass And with fronts, you've got three different types of fronts. Okay, the first one is called a cold front. So a cold front. The second one is called a warm front. And the last one, the third one, is called an occluded front. Occluded front. And for your junior exam, you need to know each of these different types of fronts. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is um, a cold front. So you might wonder, what is a cold front? Well, a cold front forms when you've got a cold air mass and you've got a warm air mass. Now, what happens to form this cold front? So this bit area here, where they actually meet, is called, that is the front. And you've got warm fronts, cold fronts, and occluded fronts. But what makes this a cold front? Well, basically, this what makes it a cold front is because the cold air mass is moving uh, towards the warm air mass. And because the cold air moves towards the warm air mass, this causes it to be called a cold front. Because what actually happens is the cold air mass moves really quickly on top of the warm air mass. Now, because warm air mass and the cold air mass don't mix, the warm air is forced to rise up really quickly and this brings 
certain weather conditions which I'm going to explain to you now. So a few little things. Cold front, it's when a cold and warm air mass meet. The cold air mass the cold air mass attacks the warm air mass Because the cold and the warm air mass don't mix, because the cold air is heavier than the warm air, the cold air pushes the warm air up. So the cold air pushes the warm air mass upwards. What happens then is the warm air mass is forced to cool very quickly. Cools, condenses, and cumulus clouds develop. And then what happens, you get very heavy rain. The next one we're going to look at is called a warm front. And like we said before, a warm front forms when you've got warm air mass and you've got a cold air mass. And we know that this part here is going to be called the front because it's where both of them meet. But, these are, but this one is going to be a warm front. So why is this one called a warm front? Well, this is because you've got warm air mass and a cold air mass. And like the, in the last one, we had the cold air mass attacking the warm air mass. But this time, the warm air mass actually attacks the cold air mass. So when the warm air mass moves over the, the cold air mass, again, they can't mix because the warm air is less dense. So what happens is it's forced up over the cold air mass. It'll cool, condense, and uh, cumulus clouds will form, and you will get some precipitation and rainfall after that. One thing it is worth to note, at a warm front, the rainfall and precipitation is not as heavy as you would get at a cold front. So warm front is when warm air so warm and cold air masses meet. Meet each other. What happens here is um, the warm air the warm air mass attacks the colder air mass. So tax moves over the cold air mass. Cold air mass. The third point, as uh, they don't mix, so they don't mix well, warm air is forced to rise up. The warm air mass forced to rise up as the warm air mass rises up over the cold air mass the air cools and condenses Cumulus clouds develop. So cumulus clouds develop 
and it rains. Okay, so that's it for a warm front. Okay, and the last front you need to learn is an occluded front. So, what is an occluded front? We know what a warm front is and we know what a, what a cold front is. But what's an occluded front? An occluded front is when a cold front, which we have here, and you have a warm front here. So, it's when a cold front catches up with the, a warm front. And when it catches up with it, it's called an occluded front. The warm air is going to be totally lifted off the ground because of the cold air in the front, uh, in front of it and behind it. Occluded fronts will give very heavy rainfall and will have very strong wind speeds. Okay, so I've quickly jotted down a few points there. I said uh, occluded front is when the cold front, which is here, catches up with the warm front. The warm air, which is here, is, is forced to rise up completely. The warm air cools and condenses very quickly, forming um, clouds. And what you get is very heavy rainfall and very strong winds. Okay guys, that's it for today's uh, tutorial on air masses and fronts. I hope you enjoyed it. This can be um, a topic that students sometimes find difficult, but it's, it's not a difficult topic at all. And I hope that my tutorials have made it really simple, really simple for you. And now you understand it. If you would like more videos, and uh, maybe you'd like more videos on this restless atmosphere, uh, please check out my other videos on my website, examvision.ie. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash examvision. And you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you'll find us at examrevision for you. Guys, please can you leave me some feedback on my YouTube channel, um, or you can, you can tweet us. Um, really, really appreciate all the feedback we get. So far, we've got some some really nice feedback, some ways to we can improve our videos, and we've been uh, some people have told us on things that they would like us to do videos on. And if you tell us, we will of course do it. Thanks, guys.